All right, Martin, thanks for joining us. Um, today we announced the appointment of Carl Fetcher as our new head coach. How are you feeling about that appointment? Yeah, I'm very, very happy that uh, the search and the long search is over. Uh, it's been uh, an exit period for myself, but at the end of it, we've come out with what I believe to be the right candidate for the job, someone that's going to be able to uh, take us forward, uh, lead the club uh, and, and lead the coaches and players uh, into the rest of this season. And what was it about him that made you feel that he was the right man for the job? Well, it's weird, isn't it? Because we, we work on a process of... Uh, I personally interview six people, uh, have a coffee with six people, uh, and then I put the people forward that I feel that are the right person for the job. and and. I put four people forward to the board, and, and if I'm honest with you, the, the other people probably had more experience than Carl in the, in, in the, in the uh, management state in terms of uh, managing either in League One and League Two. Uh, but the process was that we all went through the interview process with him, and, and he kept coming out on top when we come to the to the end of that. You know, he, he had leadership, which he obviously had as a captain. Of, of many teams that he was at, including his country. Uh, I quite like the fact that he failed, uh, I will not say failed, at uh, Plymouth, I quite like the fact that he had to go through a difficult situation because they were uh, skint at the time and he had to do that when he was 31 and I think that takes some some uh, some doing as well as a 31 year old play, like a play manager at the time. and. You know, every time I, I looked at what we was looking for, he ticked, he ticked every box apart from having 200 league games behind him. And then, if I'm honest with you, I spoke to Dean Smith, actually, and I said to him, the one I like the best, and I think the board are going to like the best, is Carl Fletcher. Uh, but I'm worried that he's not got... Uh, experience apart from his Plymouth experience in terms of managing in the league and, and Dean's answer to me was well if that was the criteria then you wouldn't have been a manager talking about me and he wouldn't have been a manager when he talked about him when we first both, when we both got our first chance at Walsall and, and Leighton Orient respectively and he said that's no criteria not to take someone so that helped me make my decision and help the board make their decision uh, because as I say I believe he's got all the credentials and got all the tools to, to lead this football club forward. And he would have been someone that you would have done plenty of due diligence on as well. Yeah, I spoke to, uh, like everybody, you know, the, 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 I didn't do due diligence on the six, I did the due diligence on the four that we pushed forward. And everyone I spoke to said exactly what I wanted to hear. You know, I spoke to Stephen Purchase at Bournemouth. I spoke to, uh, or I had people speak to Eddie Al at Bournemouth, I spoke to Charlie Daniels at Bournemouth, you know, and, and I spoke to a couple of players who played, who played for him at Plymouth. And uh, yeah, we, you, you've got to do that, you've got to find out. Uh, we also spoke to the people uh, at the top at Bournemouth as well in, in terms of uh, Eddie Al, uh, in terms of the, uh, the board, some, Kent, Kent Teague spoke to some people at board level there as well and every come come back with the same answer they believe he's going to make a, a top class football manager it's just where it's going to be and where he's going to start after the after the, i suppose what you could say the semi false start at plymouth and you know talking about that that plymouth period in particular he, you know he was he was 31 the the club were under uh, sort of serious financial tribulations and you know he did manage to keep them up I suppose the second season didn't go as successfully as he would have liked, but but that's an achievement in itself. Yeah, because it's like anything. I mean, people talk about win percentages, and, and, and it, but you've got to sometimes put what are the what are the circumstances behind that situation. You just explained it perfectly. What it was like at Plymouth at that time to keep them up at that time uh, was, was nothing short of a miracle. And, and and again, speak to people that were in and around at that time. Uh, at, at Plymouth, they they was nothing but praise for Carl. I had a little bit of a, a poorer start, or a, a not a, a great start the following year. But you know, he's wanted to. You know, he, he expressed to us in, in, in an interview that he's that he's always wanted to be uh, a football a football league manager again. 
and 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 you know, as I say, he has come out on top of a process that we've used three occasions here now. You know, we've we've added a process where one come out with Steve Davis, one come with Justin Edward, now it's come with Carl Fletcher. There's no magic wand to say that you're going to make the right decision, but there is a magic wand to make sure you do all your due diligence, and 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 we've done that in this appointment. And that period at Bournemouth, you know, to to work in one of the the most uh, forward-thinking sort of football clubs, uh, you know, a, a club that consistently um, overachieve, uh, you know, dependent on their size, you know, compared to where they are in the you know in the Premier League. Um, he would have learnt lots from that in, in the various different roles he, he fulfilled there. Yeah, I mean, he's been at a club that's, uh, you know, started at the bottom of League Two. He's now a Premier League club. So he's seen that, that, that club grow, uh, grow. He's seen the, the people there uh, in terms of the management side, in terms of Eddie for most of the time, Eddie Al. Uh, work... Uh, tirelessly to make that club grow, and he, and he was he's been part of that all the way through. So he knows, and also the fact that, that forward thinking, you know, that's where he impressed us as well. You know, in terms of, you know, the sports science and the video analysis and, and everything that, that's modern around the game now. He's you know he's he's uh, got all that in an abundance. So that that all goes to making you know when you're making a, a decision, it all it all goes into the pot. And as I say, when when the pot Boiled, out come Carl Fletcher, and and and, uh, and because he's got all the all the credentials, as I keep saying. And uh, you know, he he revealed to us in his his uh, first interview since joining that um, he isn't going to be the man taking charge of this Saturday's game. He's going to be watching in the stands uh, alongside yourself. But um, you know, he's he's here and ready to to get sort of get running uh, come next week. Yeah, it just makes you know we 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 uh, we made our decision. Uh, yesterday, or well, we made a decision before yesterday, but we tried to get the process uh, through yesterday, and it, and it didn't manage to happen. So, so that uh, Carl could have took training today, and then on Friday. Uh, but uh, Ross has built the team all this week, and on Wednesday is our big work day in terms of uh, team shape. They sit and watch a video together, and Ross has done all of that uh, for this week. So the most sensible thing for, for us to do as a club is for Carl to go to the training ground. Uh, he's going to he's met Ross already, to be honest. But he's going over there to meet the, the coaching staff and tomorrow. Then he'll go and meet the players on Friday, but, but leave Ross, uh, Danny, and Joby to do what they've been doing, uh, and then let them pick the team. Because otherwise, you're just you know muddying the water. And 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 for Ross has had three good results. Let's be honest about it. So. He ain't going to let us down in any way, shape or form. And, and I think that Carl then can have a good look at um, at Grimsby, uh, sat alongside myself in, in, in the director's box and, and, and then take over properly as from Monday. And I think that's the best way to go.